If you've ever wished that you had a weapon from a game in real life, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Bowden the Great, and today I wanted to do a video on each weapon in-game and how to go about unlocking them. And after we've discussed where to get each weapon, I'll talk about my favorite loadouts depending on your different play styles as well as some other beginner loadouts. So starting off, there's basically three ways to acquire weapons from the game. Crafting, buying from the blacksmith, or finding just while exploring. The easiest way will be crafting, which can be done from your workbench. When you start the game for the first time, you have a basic weapon, the makeshift bowie knife. But after crafting your first workbench, you'll get the option to craft an iron sword. Now, if you're a new player, I highly recommend upgrading your weapon to the iron sword as soon as possible, because it's a pretty big step up from the bowie knife. Now, after you've gathered some more materials, it's time to upgrade your workbench to level one, which will unlock the iron spear, iron hammer, and iron shield. The shield is an absolute must, as even if you don't want to actively block, it'll negate a percentage of the damage you've received. Note though, your movement speed will be slightly reduced depending on what tier of shield you have equipped. Now regarding whether you craft an iron spear or hammer is totally up to you, as if you've got the iron sword, it's not really an upgrade technically to the spear or hammer, just more of a side set to better fit your playstyle. What I mean by this is do you prefer the long reach of a spear or the slow strong power of the hammer? I'll talk about my personal preferences later on in the video. But by now, you've probably at least left the starter island and are gunning to upgrade your workbench to level two, which will require some iron bars, which can be smelted in your furnace by combining iron shards and salvage metal. Once you've upgraded, you gain access to the next tier of weapons, the hardened steel tier, which is the hammer, sword, round shield, and spear. Similarly, what you craft next totally depends on your playstyle, and feel free to play around to find what feels the best. Oh, and if you're buddy-buddy with the mayor yet, he will let you even use the practice dummies in town to test out some of your new gear. Regardless, you'll definitely want to upgrade to hard and steel tier as soon as possible because the void beast get real mean. Your next workbench tier is going to be sending you into the dark forest to get some hardwood, and it's important to note that you need hardened steel axe to cut down the hardwood. But once you've got that upgrade to level 3, you'll only unlock the hardened steel heater shield, which is useful if you've got the extra resources. And a little fun fact for you, a heater shield gets its name because of its shape, which is shaped like an object that was used to heat and flatten clothing, aka an iron. The fourth upgrade requires titanium bars, which is smelted in your furnace by combining titanium ore and limestone. This upgrade unlocks your titanium weapons, which are your highest tier of weapons and highly recommend unlocking for obvious reasons. And the same rules apply as before, unlock whatever style you like. And the last and final workbench upgrade is similar to the level 3 upgrade, where you only unlock the heater shield, but this is going to be of the titanium tier. If you haven't been crafting the weapons available to you as you've been progressing, you'll want to do that now, assuming you have the extra resources. Why, you may ask? Well, you'll probably notice on the collections tab that after you unlock all the weapons and tools for each tier, you can unlock the set bonus, which is a powerful weapon. The common set item, Woodsman's Woodwrecker, say that three times fast, is not only a beast of an axe for cutting down void creatures, but it can actually be used as a massive upgrade to your iron axe to cut down wood faster. It has a slow attack speed and cannot be used with an offhand like the shield or torch, so we have to be a little bit more careful with this if you choose to use this weapon, because in between swings you'll likely take a lot of damage. The rare set item, the steel pike, is great for the player who would rather attack from afar. The reach on this bad boy is no joke, and is honestly as close to a ranged weapon as we've got thus far in Lens Island. I mean, look at how much further reach it's got on the similar steel spear. Plus, it's got pretty high damage output as well given its reach and average attack speed. Also, and most importantly, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, which you should be, you may notice that the pikes bear a striking resemblance to the pikes used by the Urukai, if the description wasn't a dead giveaway. And this brings us to what I consider to be one of the best weapons, if not the best weapon in the game, the epic set item, the Sheshien. The Sheshien will send your Lin back to feudal Japan as a samurai. The crit damage has a wild threshold from 14 to 38 damage, which is enough damage to almost one hit a lot of the void creatures. Not only that, it's got a very high attack speed, which will just have you absolutely cutting through waves of enemies. Now let's talk about our friendly neighborhood spider, uh, Blacksmith. After you've unlocked him by progressing in the caves, you gain the ability to buy crafted weapons from him. Most important thing to note with Jared is that it takes time for him to restock between buying out his stash, so come back a day or so after buying out his inventory for new weapons. 
The first weapon he makes available for you is more of a thank you for saving me, which is actually a great deal. The Iron Battle Axe for one gold is a great weapon that is more of a cross between the sword and the hammer as it offers average attack speed but pretty high damage output. I would highly consider using this weapon as you progress towards hardened steel weapons in the beginning of the game. The next three weapons he offers in the hardened steel tier are the Battle Axe, Claymore, and Glaive. The battle axe, like we mentioned, is like a cross between the sword and the hammer, but slightly closer to the hammer with its average attack speed and somewhat poor reach. The claymore is even slower than the battle axe and is much closer to the hammer in terms of speed, but has a much longer reach. The claymore is great for mining clay, so you can get more clay. The glaive is more like a cross between a sword and your spear with having a much faster attack speed, but the big plus with the glaive is that it has a much wider swing so you can hit a lot of enemies within its radius. And most importantly, it looks super badass. Because as we always say, fashion trumps stats. After you've bought these out, the next obvious tier is titanium with the same weapon type options. Battle Axe, Claymore, and Glaive. Same as before, whatever weapon type fits your playstyle, go with it. Or hell, like I just mentioned, fashion over stats, just pick the one you think looks the coolest and use that. This brings us to the final category, which sadly there aren't near as many options of weapons to find while exploring, but I'm sure we can expect Flow Studio to add more. The Forge Shield is found in the first boss cave, which offers massive protection from enemies, but at a massive cost of speed. It reduces your speed down to 60%, so I recommend only carrying this beast of a shield if you're actively in combat. The other weapon is the Forged Hammer, which is found in the second boss cave. The Forged Hammer has extremely high crit damage output at 24 to 50 damage. It's got a slow attack speed, so you should have no issue stringing together crits to wipe the floor with your enemies. It's probably only fair, but similarly to the Woodsman's Woodwrecker, you cannot equip an offhand while using the Forged Hammer because your limb would basically turn into a tank. And obviously, most importantly, your special attacks have this really cool animation that creates lightning as you strike, basically transforming you into the God of Thunder. Also, this is the first and only weapon at this time that introduces the knockback mechanic that physically knocks your enemies back, allowing you to gather yourself for a quick second to heal or just get a quick breather. Now that we've basically covered how to get every weapon in-game, I'll give you some of my favorite weapon loadouts. A good beginner weapon I used really until I got enough supplies to upgrade to hardened steel is the Iron Battle Axe. Like I mentioned before, you get it by saving the blacksmith, so he gives you a good deal on selling it for only one gold, so it's super affordable. It does a pretty good amount of damage and is slow enough that if you're new to the game, it can be easier to land crits. And on top of that, I also recommend crafting the basic iron shield and using it in your offhand. That said, if you're struggling to clear the first cave with your starter knife, then I recommend crafting the iron sword, then giving you a little help until you can actually upgrade to the uh, iron battle axe. Unfortunately, in this new update, the Marlin Sword has been removed from the game, so there really isn't a specific beginner weapon that just totally outshines all the other weapons. Now for some late game loadouts, if you're into fast attacks and dishing out some quick hits and rolling away, then my absolute favorite is to run the Sheshian with the Titanium Shield, specifically the round shield and not the heater. This is because you run a little bit slower with the heater shield, and this build you want to stay a little bit more nimble. And also, personally, I usually only have the shield equipped as I'm actively in combat since it slows you down. The other option I really have a lot of fun with is using the Steel Pike with the same titanium shield for the long reach and its wide special attacks. The opposite side of this loadout if you prefer slower attack speeds given that you may struggle hitting crits on high speed weapons, but use the Forge Hammer in this case. It just does an insane amount of damage, even though you'll be a bit more vulnerable given that you can't hold a shield. Just be sure to pack plenty of ways to heal yourself. And that about wraps up the different weapons currently in game. What is your favorite weapon to use? Please drop it in the comment section below. And as always, if you have any questions about Lint's Island or just really anything in life at all, please drop it in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer them. See you next time, YouTube. Peace out.